بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسوله وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا مزيدا إلى يوم الدين أما بعد All of our deeds at all times must be solely for the sake of Allah You don't give any portion of your deeds to other than Allah Not for riya, show off or anything else وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ one of the best cures for those who struggle or think they struggle with show off is to establish in your heart that in the simple world, in the simple world, people run into trials and tribulation by the qada and qadr of Allah. And everyone here and everywhere can tell you of times where people turned away in minor and major difficulties they went through. People turned away and left them alone. If they're not going to stand in the simple world, why would you give them some of your most valuable assets, your deeds, when the only one who will be there for you and worthy of your deeds is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, both in this life and in the life after? Secret, discreet, sincere deeds between you and Allah are what you ask Allah with when you are in a desperate need, both in this life and in the for, in for matters of the life after. You know the story in Sahih Muslim of the three men who sought refuge in a cave when, uh, when it began to rain. As they entered the cave in Sahih Muslim, it closed upon them. One of the three men said, get up each one of you and make dua through your deeds so Allah can rescue us. So the first man got up and said, Oh Allah, my children wept at my feet because I didn't deem it advisable to serve milk to them because when I returned from work late, I found my parents were sleeping. Oh Allah, I remained at my parents' head as my children wept all night long until daylight broke out and I fed them. Then I fed my kids. Oh Allah, if I did that for your pleasure and in your sake, in your sake only, grant us riddance from this trouble that, that, that we are in. Oh Allah, and the rocks slipped away a little bit, but not enough for any of them to leave. Know how he said, if I did it for your sake and your sake only. Yes, it was the deed he did. But it's also the sincerity of that deed. The secretiveness of that deed. The next one gets up, he says, Oh Allah, I had a cousin that I wanted to have a relationship with her. And she refused. And one day she fell on a hardship. She said, I need to borrow 100 dinar. And I agreed to give her 100 dinar until, uh, if she uh, had a relationship with me. Oh, he said, oh Allah, when I approached her for intercourse, she said, servant of Allah, fear Allah, attaqillah, and don't break this seal of chastity except by its lawful means. Ya Allah, I got up. Oh Allah, if I did that for your sake, in your sake only grant us riddance from the trouble and problem that we are facing. Likewise, the third man gets up, open a little bit, not enough. The third one says, oh Allah, I had a worker. He didn't take his wages for that day. He left some of his rice, so I planted it, and I became rich with flocks of cows and sheep from that investment. He returned to me later and he said, fear Allah and give me my wages. So I told him that flock of sheep and uh, cows are all yours. He said, fear Allah and don't mock me. And I said, he said, oh Allah, I told him, I'm not mocking you. Ya Allah, if I did that for your sake and your sake only, then remove this hardship that we're facing. The rock moved away and they were finally able to leave from the cave. You want that to happen to you? It's not impossible. That's why the Prophet ﷺ taught us this. If you want that to happen to you, Ramadan is the best time to stock up on secretive, sincere deeds. Let nobody know about them. You yourself try to forget about them. The days go by. Life is pregnant with, it, pregnant with its trials and tribulation. After years, maybe a child will get sick. Maybe cancer, pain, poverty. May Allah save you, guard all of you from all that. Then you raise your hand. You say, oh Allah, I had that deed and I did it in secrecy. In sincerity for your sake. Oh Allah, grant me riddance from this trouble that I'm facing. Or forget about it all together. And let Allah remind you of it when it's placed in your scale on the balance on the judgment day. Wallah al-Azim, Allah will remind you of it. فَلَا تُظْلَمُ نَفْسٌ شَيْئًا وَإِنْ كَانَ مِثْقَالَ حَبَّةٍ مِنْ خَرْدَلِينَ أَتَّيْنَا بِهَا وَكَفَى بِنَا حَاسِبِينَ We shall set up the balances, the scales of justice on the judgment day. No one will be dealt with in oppression. No one will be dealt with unjustly. And if there's a tiny weight of mustard seed of a deed, we will bring it. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah said, 
Deeds without sincerity are like a traveler who carries a water jug full of dirt. Carrying that jug burdens him and doesn't bring him no benefit. What a statement. What an amazing statement. Deeds without sincerity are like a traveler who carries a water jug full of nothing but dirt. Carrying it burdens him and brings no benefit. What does dirt, sand, do to someone who has nothing but sand in a desert? Dawood ibn Abi Hind fasted for 40 years. His own wife didn't know about it. He was a wool maker. And his wife would prepare some food for him and send him off when he leaves to work. He would give it to a poor man in the market and return at night after Maghrib to break his fast with his wife. The people in the market think that he ate with his wife. And the wife thinks that he ate from that which she prepared for him, which he gave for a poor man. Sincerity. Sincerity. That's what it was about. He prayed Qiyam for 20 years. His wife didn't know about it. Ikhlas. Ayyub al-Sikhtiyani used to pray the entire night. And then a few moments before Fajr, he would raise his voice in recitation in Quran. So people would think he got up just a few moments before Fajr. When he in reality never even got sleep all night long. Hassan ibn Abi Sinan, his wife said, my husband used to trick me like we parents trick their kids. He used to trick me to sleep. And when I sleep, he get up and pray. One time she caught him, she said, Abu Abdullah with his kunya, why do you punish yourself like this? Easy on yourself. He said, woe to you woman. You want me to sleep? I'll sleep and I'm going to sleep and get my rest on a day when I'll never wake up from my sleep. Zain al-Abidin, the grand, great-grandson of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Zain al-Abidin ibn Ali radiyallahu anhu. He used to feed poor people in Medina for 10 years. Nobody knew who was bringing them food. Every day in the morning, they'd find food in front of their houses. When Zain al-Abidin died, they figured out it was him because no longer did they get any food. And more so, when they washed him and shrouded him, they found marks on his back from carrying the bags to the poor people. Al-A'mash said, I visited Ibrahim in Nakhai, and he began to read Quran and he constantly read Quran. Whenever get, he had guests, he'd quickly put the Quran and hide it away and he would tell me, confide in me, I don't want people to see that I'm reading Quran. What a difference. What a difference between them and those who never sweat for the sake of Allah yet bolster about it. Those who bolster about a simple little khutbah they gave, or a couple orphans they spon sponsored, or maybe a five-minute talk, or just going for the taraweeh two, three nights out of Ramadan. It's usually those with such deeds that they bolster about that have no effectiveness or no sincerity. And it's those with secret deeds that have the effective sincere deeds. Ibn al-Jawzi, rahimahullah, said Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak, who died 181 years after the hijrah, he was a sincere master who, who feared losing sincerity of his deeds if people knew about his deeds or if they praised him. Naim ibn Hamad said, when Ibn al-Mubarak read a hadith, he would cry like a camel or a cow when they're being sacrificed. The noise they make when they're being sacrificed. So Vian al said, I wished for one year of my life I could do the deeds that Ibn al-Mubarak, rahimahullah, did. He said, I couldn't even do three days worth of what Ibn al-Mubarak does. Ibn al-Mubarak, a worshiper. Ibn Allah, Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak. A imam in knowledge, a man who put his knowledge into action, beneficial knowledge, a mujahid. He went with the Muslim army one time to fend off the Romans. And when the armies clashed or posted up to begin the war, as was the trend back then, a man from each side would start off the fight. So a man from the Romans got up, who, he said, who wants to sword fence with me? Which is the one-on-one -on -one, uh, fighting with the sword. One Muslim stood up to him, fought him for a while. He was wounded and the Roman Ilj killed him. A second man, Muslim, went up to him. Same thing happened. Third man got Muslim, uh, got killed. Same thing. The fourth man fought him for some time and killed him. The people crowded around the heroic man to see who he was. Abda ibn Sulaiman said, I was among those who crowded around this hero to see who he was. 
he turned out to be someone who was masked. He covered his face. He didn't want nobody to know who he was. And he walked away from the crowd as if nothing happened. Abd said, I grabbed his mask, covering, and I took it off. And it was no other than Abdullah ibn Mubarak. Abdullah said, uh, Abdullah ibn Mubarak said, Abu Umar, the name of the, the kunya of the man who pulled the mask off, Abda, he said, you are among those who expose us? You are among those who expose us? He considered exposing him. Commenting on the story, Ibn al-Jawzi said, he's a sincere master who feared it would affect his sincerity if anyone ever seen or praised any of his deeds. Ahmad ibn Hanbal said, Allah did not raise Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak to the elevated status that he reached except by secrets he had between you, him and Allah. Establish those secrets this month, these days. Ibn al-Jawzi mentioned the Al-Hasan al-Basri and Ibn al-Mubarak. They lived in the same time for, some, for a period and they took a walk one day. When they got to a fountain to drink, it was crowded. Had people known who they were and recognized them, they would have opened the way for them. But no one knew who these men were. Abdullah ibn Mubarak reached a fountain, broke through the crowd, reached the fountain, drank, and left. And then he looked at Al-Hasan al-Basri. Al-Hasan al-Basri, he said, he looked at me and said, this is, the, this is the right way to live. Imam in every aspect that you look at it. They were all imams in every aspect they look at it. They don't want nothing to be known. Secret deeds that no one knows about. It. Tears in the deep darkness of the night. Recitation in the deep darkness of the night. Allah will raise your mention in honor in both worlds. Al-Rabi' ibn Khuthayn, the worshiper who used to cover his worship so no one would know what he did. When he recited Quran and he seen people were about to pass by, he would cover it with his stop so no one would know who he would recite it. فَلَا تَعْلَمُ نَفْسٌ مَا أُخْفِيَ لَهُ مِنْ قُرَّةِ عَيْنٍ فَلَا تَعْلَمُ نَفْسٌ مَا أُخْفِيَ مَا أُخْفِيَ no person knows what is kept hidden. Hidden. Ma ukhfi is hidden. No one knows, person knows what is kept hidden for them of joy, of reward, because of what they used to do. Why did Allah say hidden? Why is it hidden? They hid their deeds for, from humans. So Allah hid for them a special reward. Reward depends on the kind of deed. You reap what you sow. You hid something. Allah is going to save something Hidden for you. رب عشعة أخفى أخبر مدفوع بالأبواب لو أقسم على الله لا أبرر. إن ده صحيح. إن صحيح مسلم. A disheveled man. أشعة. Disheveled person. أخبر means dusty. مدفوع بالأبواب means he's looked down upon so much that if he knocks on your door, you wouldn't even open his door. He's neglected in society. Everyone looks down on him. What about him? The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, if he gives an oath by Allah, Allah will fulfill it. You may think he's a nobody, I may think he's a nobody, but he's got some secrets at home in the dark nights that if he gives an oath to Allah in a, ma in a dua like ma fashion, Allah will answer it. Meaning if he says, Wallahi ya Allah, you're going to do this for me? But the intention is of course in dua, it will be answered. Every single day you say 17 times, na'bud. You alone, by far you say it 17 times. Every day you say 17 times, you alone we worship. You alone, we ask for your help. And tens of more times other than that in Sunnah you say them. Every time you say it, remember to renew your vow that you're only doing this for the sake of Allah. Make it as much secret as possible. For this Ramadan, plan and make secret your deeds and establish a secretive relationship with Allah. Worship, no one knows but you and Allah. Sincerely for the sake of Allah, keep it hidden. Salah, prayer, zakah, reciting of the Quran, taraweeh, charity, knowledge, or da'wah. You yourself try to forget it. Wallahi, you're going to be reminded of it on the judgment day. Wallahi al-Azim, you're going to see its effect in this life. If you're afflicted with a hardship years and years later, raise your hands to Allah and say, Allah, I got up every single night of Ramadan. No one knew that but me and you. If I did that sincerely for your sake and your sake, then grant me riddance of this trouble and trial that I'm facing. Allahumma inna na'udhu bika an nushrika bika wa nahnu na'lam. Wa nastaghfiruka lima la na'lam. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.